Thank you for following along with Forgotten Gear Restorations. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Top of the morning, goons and mutants. It's a beautiful day here in Southern California, isn't it? Well, it's always a beautiful day, regardless of the weather, when you get one of these Hot Rod Series amps up and running for somebody. So, brief recap. Uh, low voltage supply issue. The negative 16 volt rail in particular. If I seem a little more sprightly, it's because, yeah, I got a couple hours of sleep and, and we got a good outcome here. So, why wouldn't I be happy? Um, now, the usual suspects uh, being, uh, you're going to see some upgraded caps here. That's why uh, things look a little different. Um, the usual suspects being some uh, Carbonara of the PCB below these big 5-watt droppers um, was not the case, though that was an issue. It was not the issue. Uh, certainly, the uh, the traces had lifted and and remove themselves from, from the board, certainly. Um, so much heat had actually made it through the board that uh, the little adhesive underneath the foil traces had vaporized, um, including the solder pad on a 16, negative 16 volt supply. So um, I just changed uh, the usual suspects, did, did a little bit of upgrading on, on the filtering here, um, installed some new Zener diodes with a nice air gap, uh, and the whole rest of it, the usual stuff that you guys are familiar with. So, um, after doing a repair of the rear PCB, um, I was still not getting any channel switching. Uh, quite frustrating. Um, so I had to go through and start for the, from the beginning, down way over here on the western side of the board, way down here, looking at uh, the raw AC coming in from the low voltage taps of the, the power transformer. Um, everything was fine. Um, I upgraded uh, the diodes here, uh, the filters here, all the way down to the point where they input into these dropper resistors. Still, um, th there, was, there was no output, any sufficient output other than 3.8 to 4 volts, negative 4 volts DC on the uh, minus 16 volt rail. Um, so uh, my suspicion had turned from um, the trace material over to the op amps. And it turns out that despite the fact that I saw no uh, shorts on the 16 volt rail, minus 16 volt rail, despite that, um, that was not a clear indication that one of these ICs was not internally shorting. Um, so instead of forcing myself to go through the motions of stressing these ribbon cables by repeated um, install and removal of this, um, the main PCB here, what I did was the last time I dropped it, I just socketed all three of these guys. Uh, th these do go bad. And it turns out that the U3 IC, this guy here, had an internal short. Um, and the way I was able to determine that uh, was pretty simple. So monitoring the minus 16 volt rail, um, I just systematically pulled each one of these chips separately. Um, and then observing the voltage, I noticed that when I pulled U3, the 16, minus 16 volts had suddenly reappeared. So this guy was shorted and it caused that minus 16 volt rail to collapse, just completely pulled it down. And that would explain why I was getting a minus, uh, I was getting a 40 volt a voltage drop across this uh, R79 uh, dropper right here. Way too much current was, was being pulled through here. So that's it. Um, now, 
let's observe this. You're gonna hear some noise, and why are you hearing it? Well, simple. It's because um, I have a very noisy lamp here that, that causes a lot of in, in radiated hum to be picked up by the input circuitry, so. Just observe the little LED down there. We have channel select right there. Awesome. Then we have more drive. Awesome. Again, the buzz is from this lamp. Awesome. And then check this out, Jeff. This is your reverb completely cranked up. How fabulous is that? Uh, before I even um, before I even identified the source of the drain, uh, I was able to um, remove that uh, ripple from the reverb circuit uh, through um, improving the filtering there along the low voltage supply. Um, I did. Let's let's capitalize on what this amp does best by increasing the reservoir cap to 80 microfarads, and then I went uh, 40 on the next stage and then 20s for the next two nodes. So remarkably quiet. And that's it with nothing. No reverb. That's reverb full up. So you know what I gotta do now. Let's, um, let's throw the signal generator into the input and see if we can make some cool sounds. All right, let's get this old girl set up. Shall we? And I can finally remove my reading glasses. Man, that's that's how you know you're getting up there in age if you're not there. All right, that's that's always been my test. As soon as I hit forty, once a year, whenever I was within proximity of one of those inevitable reading glasses stands at the store, I would throw a pair on and then observe. And then it was. Um, a year and a half ago that they made a difference and then I knew it was just too late for me. That's it. So let's go into input one. Let's get our cable sorted out. I'm gonna go um, with the 1950s uh, Michigan State signal generator, which was designed and constructed by the math and science department. Let's get her warmed up, which doesn't really take long because there's no vacuum tube in there. It's completely solid state. There it is. It's already sounding lovely. We'll go with a sine wave so we can uh, actually hear the clean signal. Oh, baby. Again, you're going to get some background noise. a 400 hertz a triangle wave and check out these tone controls nice bass middle beautiful presence nice <sighs> look how long it takes for those big old caps to drain now Lots of capacity. Uh, Jefferson. Jeffrey or Joffrey. It could just be Jeff. 
I'm elated and I'm incredibly happy. Now that we've, uh, we've got you sorted out, um, thankfully, due to the uh, limited current there through the, uh, the supply, at least for U3, I'm able to use a run-of-the-mill TLO 72 CP. That'll win the day. So let me get her buttoned up and then we'll do a final test with the guitar. And then, you know what, let's check the foot switch because Lord forbid, something else surprises us, huh? Talk to you soon. All right, just for our own edification, let's drive up some noise and listen. And then observe the LEDs down there. We'll go channel. See that? We'll go drive and more drive. See that? And then channel. She's responsive too. I like it. All right, Jeff. Get out of here. All right, Jeff, uh, that noise you hear in the background, I'm gonna to touch the lamp body, watch this. See that? It's a very noisy lamp here. So listen, and then also that's my Strat, so that's no noise. But watch this, roll it up, single coils. <laughs> Received some uh, concern from my kids that um, that perhaps the little guys were harmed during the filming, but I had to uh, ensure them that it was just a reenactment. That the little guys were okay, even this guy. So uh, let's get some more drive. Try it out. Awesome. <laughs> Single coils, uh, they're going to be uh, pretty gnarly. <laughs> Drive 
It's always worth the struggle if you don't quit you power through it you stay positive I I didn't stay positive the entire time but it's the law of averages it's also a numbers game um, you put the time in you put the effort in and, and you may you may come up behind on one restoration but the knowledge you pick up allows you to um, be more efficient with the next one. This is a problem that I've never seen. And I've been working on these amps for 20 years. I've never seen a shorted IC on one of these yet. So, there's a, a first time for everything, isn't there? And yeah, there is. So at the end of the day, it's worth it. And I hope you guys are well out there. I've got a, a PV Classic 5410 straight from Meridian. Looks like it was in a time machine. Andy, I'm talking about you, buddy. Uh, the rest of you goons out there, appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.